If you want to know what Lincoln sent memorials to look for from 1970 to 1979, then you need to watch this video. This is Daniel, and you are watching Coin Help You, and my latest video on Lincoln Memorial Sense from the decade 1970 to 1979. We are going to cover each date, each mint. Now, this list is not exhaustive. I am not including every single variety that you can find, but we're going to go over a few and make a few points. So please like, share, and comment and stay tuned. As you are watching these videos, I want to remind everyone each one of these varieties are known and each one of these varieties have an early die stage, a medium die stage, and a late die stage. And for each one of those stages, there are die marks, what we call pups or pickup points. They could be die cracks, they could be die marks, they could be polish lines, different things like that. That helps you identify these varieties. Some of these are going to be worth a lot of money. Most of them are not. But the ones that are worth a lot of money, they must match the die marks exactly or it is not the variety that is worth the money. When we're looking at these just remember that. Remember that you need to match die markers and that's why I use coppercoins.com, Konica's Variety Vista, I use Cherry Pickers Guides, I use Strike It Rich for Pocket Change. You know, these are books and resources that I have read and studied and researched for years and that's what you need to do when you think you found something. You want to match it up to a picture. So with that let's continue on and start looking at some of these coins. This is the first coin. It's the 1970s small date. This is one of the most confused Lincoln Cent memorials. A lot of people call it level 7. I see it in books and that's fine if you want to call it that. But I want to point out a couple key things that you need to identify this. Now it's not an extremely valuable coin except in the higher grades. But it's still worth finding. You can still find it in pocket change. You can still find it in mint sets. And you can still find it in proof sets. What you want to look at here, you see this 9. The inside of that 9, the tip of it, points to the almost the middle of the 7. Okay? If it's that's on the small date. On the large date, it's a little flatter and it points to the bottom or underneath the 7. Also, the Liberty is typically weak. You'll see a weak Liberty struck on these as well. It's one of the identifying markers and one of the things I was talking about earlier. It's the die marks. It's the way that the characteristics are of the letters uh, and the numbers. And that's how you know that this is a small date versus a large date. Next is a 1970S. This is the double die of verse. And this is a, a pretty valuable one here and it's a widespread on it. You can, as you can see, as we pointed out and coming in real close, you can see on the date there's a little bit of here. You know, you got uh, the typical look on a 1970s, 60s mint marks. They've got that, that look to them like they've got their little die chips in them or you know some people call it clogged up here's the Liberty what it looks like here as you can see that there's pretty good splits on it it actually is thicker because of this because you've got a doubled it's doubled okay on a strike double coin it's gonna look it's gonna make the the D thinner and this is gonna be flat right here and here is an RPM it's an S over S and we'll get in close here and take a look at this as you can see, here's part of the upper part of the S on this one, and it's a little thicker down in here. These are kind of confusing, I know, because these mint marks are, are not the best mint marks, and they have all kinds of little bumps in them, and sometimes they're filled in, and it's hard to identify some of these. Now, for 1970, you do have more than one RPM. Most of these dates have more than one RPM, but most of them are really common, but, you know, kind of bragging rights say I found an RPM or I found a double die. Same thing with some of these that have more than one double die. The next one is a 1971 double die. And like I said here, it doesn't have a mint mark. That means it was struck at Philadelphia. Anytime you look at a Lincoln cent, the only year you're going to have a mint mark on it from Philadelphia is 2017. They put a P on them for their anniversary. Otherwise, they will, will not have a mint mark if they're minted in Philadelphia. That's normal unless they're a proof. Okay, proofs have an S mint mark on them on, uh, for this date. Here, get real close and take a look at the Liberty. It also looks very similar to the other uh, double dies that we've seen. And right here, you can kind of see it when I get up really close. Uh, the date it has a little here. And I know the image is just a tad bit blurry, so it's kind of hard to see. But when you're looking at it, you know, like I said, it's, it's doubled. It's thicker. Now we'll go to the 1972. 1972 is the year for the double dies in the 1970s. You have multiple double dies for this date and one of the things about that 
is three of them are extremely valuable, not including the proof. There is a proof that's double die. But you have your uh, 72 no, you know, plane, uh, 01, the 02, and then the 04. And the 04 is extremely valuable. And I'm going to show you that one. It's not an easy, it's not the most obvious double die. But here's a picture of it on coppercoins.com and it shows you all the die marks that you look for to identify this one and it has to look exactly like this one. So you've got a little bit of die striations here, you got a little bit of, of die wear and that gets worse over time and it can also it can fool you and make you think it's the double die when it's not. You got little tiny cuts forming on the rim. A cut is around the rim die break. It has to be on the rim. It has to connect the rim, basically. And that's where you, you want to find these die marks. It has to look exactly like this. You find when it looks like these pictures, go to coppercoins.com and look, look this up. That's, then you know it's the one. Because you can be easily fooled. Okay. Here's a 1972. There's RPMs for this date and mint as well. And we'll look at a couple of them. And as you can see, the mint marks right here, the weekly struck punch mint mark. And these are all punched into the dies by hand. And here's another one. You can see just a little artifacts of the previously weekly punched or out of place punched mint mark. And there's little die marks on these as well. It helps identify it. Even the RPMs have die marks. And here's the 72S. And it's also an RPM. Um, actually, this one here, here's the 72S and it's the double die. It's the one that you're going to see the most. Um, right here's the little tail on it. Um, there's a lot of them that have this. A lot of them are master uh, die doubled and that means they're extremely common. They're still worth, you know, five bucks in an uncirculated condition, up to twenty some dollars. You know, they're, they don't have a whole lot of interest because there's just so many of them. And here's some more pictures. Here's the um, 01. Uh, it's real obvious. The spreads on this one are just phenomenal. I mean, it's a beautiful double die. It's just almost similar to the 1955 as far as the spread's concerned. It's really nice looking coin. Um, that's easy to identify. Here's the uh, FS02 that's valuable, not as valuable as the other 001 or the 04, but it's really nice too. You can see a little bit of a spread on it as well. All right, 73D, you have a double die averse. And here's all the what it's supposed to look like. A little thicker thickening of the letters helps identify it. And you can see the die marks on it. Um, you know, this is one of them that's not very obvious. It is not extremely valuable, but you can find it. But it's mostly by, you know, there's a little notch in the R of trust. That's one of the pickup points you want to take a look at uh, first. Uh, you also have um, the 73D RPM that to look for and you can see that the little bit of the D's still inside and then down at the bottom here it also shows you the other die marks to look for when you look for that here's another one and this this one confuses some people because it doesn't have large spreads but you can see just a little bit of a, a kind of you know where the old mint marks met on top of each other almost centered the the centered mint marks when they're repunched like this they are kinda of hard to identify and if your coins worn or has obtained a lot of you know die wear from the die use, then you're sometimes going to run into kind of looking like it's repunched when it's not. You know that's why it's important when you're looking at these to identify the die marks besides the mint mark. If you just look at the mint mark, you're kind of doing yourself a disservice because you want to look at all the other areas of the coin that I help identify it as the RPM. Okay, that's what's important here. Here's another one. It's a 74D, and this is the double die adverse on this one. And on this one. It shows you there's a little more thickness of the letter. One thing to remember about RPMs and double dies, they can be to the west, east, south, or north. Okay? They can be any directions, and that's one of the key things here. Double dies are going to be in one direction. In other words, you're looking for a thickness or, or spreading in a certain direction. Okay? When you're seeing it on all sides of the devices, that's strike doubling or mechanical doubling. It's not going to be on all sides. Okay. The other thing is about mint marks are the same way. North, south, east, and west. That first mint mark was hand punched on there weekly or in a different position or horizontally. The next mint mark you know, punched on there correctly. So you're going to have a certain direction. And that's one of the important things here you want to see. If you're seeing what looks like a mint mark all around the outside of the mint mark that's already there, 
then you know that's probably dieware and that's probably not an RPM. And this one here will go to, um, this is a 1974, and this is a D with an RPM. And you can see just a little bit of a bump here. This one here is probably going to be hard to identify. There are some die marks on the reverse that you want to look for, and that'll help you ID it. Um, you know, sometimes die, this, the coins can be so circulated you can't identify some of these RPMs. And that's one of the problems people run into. And really, they're not worth a whole lot. So if you really can't identify it, it's not going to be worth trying to put too much time in it. You want to move on to the next coin. Move on to the better coins. Here's a 75. And this is another double die. This one has got the little bit of the previous punch D right here at the bottom. Here's some other die marks to identify it with. And moving on to... Here's the 1976 double die adverse. It's known for extra thickness of the letters and liberty and of the date and God we trust we as you can see when you look down through here you want to identify the die marks as I say before you have to identify the die marks it has to look like this coin here's a 1977D with uh, RPM and uh, this one here is worn down a little bit but you can still see just a little bit but there is a 1977 double die um, it was on I believe Konica Variety Vista um, I don't have a lot of information or an image for that for you on that one, I'm sorry. There's some of these I don't have. They're not real popular. Um, when they're not real obvious or don't get nicknames and things like that, they tend to not be uh, popular when it comes to varieties. Um, you know, double dies in itself is going to be worth a little bit of a premium anyways, but they're not always rare and they're not always exciting to some people. There's certain dates, just they just get the press and the collectors, and they're just a little more rare and collectors just want them. And that, that gives them the value. Uh, here, is 1978 D and as you can see and I'm gonna give you an example you have one two three four five on coppercoins.com has five Konica may have some more listed that's not listed here okay because the, all these lists are not exhaustive these are to give you an example you know you're to do a little bit of research when you think you found something but all of these have a little link down here MDS MDS that's mid die stage late die stage what you want to do is you click on that and you identify the die markers but yeah, you can see the values here. They're not worth a lot of money, but I mean, they're worth finding. Bragging rights, you've got one for each date and mint for 1970s. You can find a double die for almost every single date and mint in the 1970s. Almost goes for every single date and mint for the entire Lincoln Cent series. There's going to be some minor double die or, or an RPM for the ones with the mint marks. Here's 1979. Do have the RPMs listed, and as you can see, there's three of them. Don't have a picture for one of them. And this is the way it is. It's an ongoing process. It's an ongoing learning process. You know, we we'll never know it all about these coins. There was billions and billions minted, and no one person can go through all of them in their lifetime, and it takes a group effort to find all these new varieties and identify them and catalog them, and, you know, sometimes you've got different die stages, and like I told you before. But anyways, like I said, this list is not exhaustive by any means. Hopefully you was able to learn something from it, uh, learn how to identify some of your double dies. I would really enjoy you guys to join my forum uh, coin help community uh, at coinoxnesshelp.com and post your finds uh, I would love to see you guys find some stuff and uh, love to see your RPMs and and what you maybe you'll find a new discovery you just never know so thanks for watching and please like share and comment and click that little bell beside the subscribe button uh, that way you get notifications for every single video I release thank you and have a great day